This is a companion video for my asset pack post processing texture overlay published now in the asset store. So you can import this folder and you can import the script. You do not need to import those two if you want to have a small project, but here are some examples. So uh, let's first go to the simple example. You mainly got a main camera, direction light and the post process volume. Make sure to have the scriptable render pipeline on. If you create a project with a lightweight render pipeline, you will get these assets from the start. So to add the texture overlay, go to add effect, digital games and texture overlay. Then you get something like that. You can choose a texture you want to display. And this is the result in game view. You can change the parameters, for example, you do not have to keep the aspect ratio. You can set the tiling if you want. You can set um, the offset if you want as well. So this is all possible. And you can set if the alpha should be transparent or not. So this is nice and neat. But what's really nice is the other example because here we used a camera to render the camera output to a texture and then use this texture here uh, for the texture overlay step. And here you see the scene. We have two cameras. The, this camera just renders this box. This could be, for example, a weapon. And the other camera is the main camera. And now, as soon as I go into the game, you see they are separate rendering layers composed together by this asset. So the asset is made of two different scripts. So the first one is the texture overlay. CS, this is the C sharp script, and the other one is the shader itself. And I will explain both of them now. Okay, how do we create this awesome texture overlay? We just create a class called texture overlay, and this is a post process effect settings. And these are only the settings. We will write a second class for in a moment to really render the thing. But the settings have to be serializable so that it can be shown in the editor UI. And then you have another thing called post process and then you can set some options. For example, which class is a renderer? Which class does really the rendering? Um, it would be easier if I could do it in one class, but Unity decided you need two classes and type the name of the second class here. Then you specify which point in time you will um, render it. So you can say after the stack, before the stack or before transparent. So we want to have it after the stack, maybe before if you want to um, apply all the effects to the second layer as well. But for example, for depth of field, it doesn't make sense to have it um, on, on this UI layer or this weapon layer. And then you just say, this is my path. I want to find it under digital games texture overlay. And I don't want to see it in scene view. I just want to see the effect in the game window itself. In scene view, you can't see it. You see it here. And then let's act, add some parameters. For example, the texture. Texture is a texture parameter. It comes all from this Unity engine rendering post-processing. There are all these parameters. You can add tooltips, you can add a header section, you can add default values for texture, it doesn't make sense. And I added some more um, parameters, for example, a vector two for tiling, vector two for offset, a bool parameter for aspect ratio, uh, and another header with a tooltip active, and say alpha is transparent, yes or no. And then we can create the second class. The second class uh, is called texture overlay renderer for this texture overlay. And then you have to reference it by say, this is a post process effect renderer with texture overlay as a settings class. Settings class because this class has a parameter called settings. We will create a simple method, takes a bool, puts out one if it is true, and zero if it is false. Do we need this? Yes, we need this in a second. Okay, um, now the last error is gone. Uh, not only the last, but 
um, the render text, the render method is the most important method here. You override it, it's like update on a mono behavior. It's called every frame and for every pixel. Um, Oh no, it's it's just uh, called before you really render it. Um, you just uh, have a context and property sheets, and there's a method get, and then you just have define a shader that should be there. For example, the digital games texture overlay shader. We will write this shader in a minute. It's not that complex, and then we say okay, sheet property set texture. Um, image, image texture. We're just passing the image texture um, variable to the shader, just from CPU to GPU. So this is all what this code is doing. And then we just copy and paste this. This is in the Unity documentation. So there's a page on GitHub where they say how you write this custom effect. And I would always start by just copy and paste some code. And this is what I did here, just copy and paste and just fit, fit it to my needs. And the image texture, you will have some problem if you directly um, use settings texture value, because this is what you get when you have a parameter. But if this is null, you should um, use one time utility transparent texture, just to pass a transparent texture and otherwise use a texture. Uh, it will, will give nasty errors because we will analyze our value with null. How do I know it? Because Unity used it in this um, link. You can go to the code, go to post processing, um, shaders, built ins, and here you find all the shader of the default post processing so you can look everything up how they created the bloom and so on you can uh, have a look at editor gizmos and there i find this code snippet and it's really helpful okay let's continue by passing the other values i will just set vector for our tiling and tiling and offset vector set an int for keep aspect ratio and alpha is transparent i don't know if i can really pass a bool, but it was easier for me to pass an int, and therefore I just call our nice method bool to int, pass a bool, and get an int out, and this is passed to the shader. If you have a look at the right side, you see that the script is under the script folder, and the resource for the shader is under the resources folder, so that it's as it is exported with a game. Uh, it will work in the editor if you put it in any other folder, but this one has to be in a resource folder as soon as you export it. If you have a look at the wiki page again, there is a section called shader. Just copy this shader. This is a very simple shader. The magic is here. Here's the code. And the other thing is uh, just everything that you have to copy. And then it looks like this in the editor. It's a good starting point. So I removed a little bit so that you really see an empty shader. This is really an empty shader. What it does, it says, okay, for the current pixel that uh, I was called, I get the color uh, in the main texture, which is just the rendered image of the main camera. And this color will be passed to the screen and now we can modify it. So at first we introduce our variables here. The image, image text size, uh, tiling, the offset, keep aspect ratio, alpha is transparent, everything that we have defined here. But to be correct, uh, I have to say I define it here and pass the value here in the C-sharp coding. Okay, let's continue. So the first thing I do is to just grab the texture coordinates. I is the parameter that comes in and these are the coordinates vector two. It's just the position of the pixel. Now I can call this method uh, text to D. Text to D takes an image, an image we just got from our C sharp script. And uh, it takes the color of the, pix uh, of the pixel on this coordinate. And I want to have this exact same coordinate as uh, on our screen. And then I have the color overlay. Two colors, color overlay and color main. This is where our weapon is and our blue screen. And this is 
where the rest of our game is rendered. And now we combine them both and say, okay, we linear interpolate, so lerp those two. Take the first color, the second color, and use the alpha of the color overlay, the alpha, to really interpolate between those two. And the alpha value is written, which is funny, because you can't stack um, cameras. You say, okay, don't care, which means you do not use the background color or the skybox, but don't care really writes the alpha value. And here you can use it to interpolate between those two. Everything that is added now is just sugar. You do not need this. I added this because you can do more. For example, tiling and offset. Tiling is just multiplying the texture coordinate and offset is just adding an offset. Uh, you have to, of course, check the bounds. So if you are out of bounds after tiling and offset, you have to correct it. Uh, I will just uh, return the color main then. Aspect ratio. Aspect ratio is just setting a tiling Y value correct according to the tiling X value, the image textile size X, Y, and the screen size X and Y. So the image textile size is never passed to uh, this shader, but as soon as you type um, you the name of your texture, and then followed by texel size, you will always get the resolution and X and Y of your texture. So I always say texture, but in shader language, it's called sampler 2D. That's how it is. We just accept it. Even as though the, the flow two is a vector two, it's just another name, other language, other name. So next thing I added is, is alpha transparent not checked? I set the overlay always to one so we always see the color overlay and that's it that's how my asset is working and it's working pretty good subscribe to my channel to get more straight to the point tutorials